Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to you about the packaging. Um, I'm looking at the slides right now. They are really not that great. So. Let's <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm going to keep being a software engineer, seeing as I can't use an HDMI output. I'll probably be a really good stand-up comedian, so... <laughs> um, so, who here has already done packaging in their lives? Okay, so I'm, the, I'm in the right bedroom. So, it's basically... Uh, people have given up on <laughs> It's basically turning an upstream package into a downstream package. So, you, you take code upstream and you make it available for your distribution. Um, so it involves a lot of debugging <coughs> because software doesn't just work out of the box, that never happens. And it means you have to send patches to the upstream developers, you have to maintain them. So that's, that's the basic idea of packaging, right? Um, is it hard? Um, no slides. Is <laughs> I have things to actually show you, but <laughs> uh, is it hard? Um, would you say it's hard to package software? Depends. Yeah. Depends how shit into software is. <laughs> <laughs> software is. Okay. Um, the issue is that you have a lot of pieces of software to, to package today, and they come from very different sources. So I'll be focusing in this talk on public package archives, such as CPAN for both, or PyPI for uh, Python, and that kind of stuff. So NPM, that kind of thing. Uh, you have many different targets, so you have to package software for Debian, Fedora, BX. Uh, you might you might use one operating system at home and a different one at work, and you might want to use the same piece of software, so you might have to do packaging for a different operating system. System. Uh, you can't really automate everything because debugging cannot really be done by a machine yet; otherwise, you'd be out of a job. Uh, <coughs> and you often end up in dependency hell where you want to package. Uh, package X and you have to package Y and you have to update the, the package Z or whatever. But some tasks can be automated. Think of a Debian package. So if you don't do Debian packaging, bear with me. Uh, it starts with creating a folder called Debian and then you have to put 27 different files in there. And <laughs> some files just have nine in there, because why not? Uh, I work at Red Hat and I'm not afraid to say this on camera, I use Debian, so I, I pick on Debian that I like it. Um, so I, I also use so, you know. Um, so basically, this can be done by a machine. And you have a lot of things as just, what's the name of the package? What's the version of the package? What's the email of the author? And that can easily be automated. Uh, you can have a script do this kind of work for you. So over the years, people have used uh, scripts, have written a new scripts that grab a package from PyPI, from Ruby, and turn it into an almost working Debian package or Fedora package. Uh, has any, anyone ever written or used a tool like that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, has anyone written a tool like that? Yeah. Uh, which one? Uh, well, I wrote the whole for different ecosystem for it and for Ampia. Okay. Uh, I wrote no to mix this. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you why you are wrong. <laughs> <And> <laughs> keep in mind that I started by doing the same. So, uh, so this is something I wanted to show you. Maybe if I hold up my... No, no, that's not going to work. Um, so the thing is, you, you have to imagine that we basically do... There's one tool uh, for that, that maps between a public package archive and a, a, a distribution. So if you have n package archives and n distribution, you have n times m tools. Okay. You don't need the slides. Um, Maybe they have slides online. Yeah, the, the slides are on my uh, first end page if you want to follow along. Uh, I'm basically at, at page page. So you have to imagine <laughs> you, 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 have, you have a huge table full of, of tools. So basically, you, you want to package Python packages on Debian, you have your tool. You want to package JavaScript packages on Fedora, you have your tool. Why is it terrible? Uh, you, you have... <laughs> thank you. I started two minutes ago, come on. Uh, <laughs> You have one CLI per tool, so if you want to use multiple tools, you have to learn how to use each and every one of, of these tools, and you have to remember their command line options. Uh, so different uh, CLI, different behaviors. Some tools might run tests, some tools might uh, create directories, some tools might not. So you don't really know what to expect. 
uh, and that's called duplication. So all the tools that read metadata from PyPI uh, will write how to pass metadata on PyPI, so that's called duplication. All the tools that uh, you can use on Debian will have a code that's basically make dear Debian and uh, echo whatever to Debian slash uh, rules and, and, and stuff like that. So um, that does code duplication for, for in, in two different parts. And you, you might think, uh, is it bad to have code duplication? Because things are really simple. And if you were in school, teachers would tell you, you do not want to copy paste code. But it's real. Like, so we're talking about like thousands of packages, so it's huge code duplication actually. Yeah, but there's only one tool that maps between, for say, PyPI and Debian, and then there's one tool that maps between PyPI and Fedora to uh, create a package. Yeah, uh -huh. So it's yeah, there's a huge table of uh, so you have to imagine you have a, a list of uh, package run clients and you have a list of distributions, and that's a huge table that you can see on page eight of the slides that are shown not here. So is it really bad to copy paste a little bit? And so this is where I have code to show you, but I'm going to describe code to you. Um, but so PyPI, just like a, a lot of package archives, gives you a JSON file that has all, a lot of metadata in it. And it has the dependencies of your package. That's, that really matters. In this JSON, for some packages on PyPI, you get the list of dependencies. You're really happy with that. It's just one field to read in the JSON file. It's really easy code. And you like, well, maybe you could duplicate that. It doesn't really matter. But on some other packages, for reasons that I don't understand, and if someone can explain that to me after the talk because I'm running out of time, that, that I would be glad to understand why. For some packages, the, the JSON file does not have the, the list of dependencies in it. So you, you're not getting it. Uh, what you can do is download the, the Python wheel. So if you don't know what a Python wheel, it doesn't matter. I'm a Python software developer. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a file <laughs> format for Python that is great for many reasons. And uh, in, in five years, they'll use something different because everything has to keep changing all the time. So no worries. Uh, it's basically a zip file, technically. So you can unzip that file, and the metadata you're looking for uh, can be found there. So you have to do one thing. If it doesn't work, you can do a second thing. And I'm a really annoying person, so I found other packages where the first method doesn't work, the second method doesn't work. And basically what you can do is try to read the source code and, and find out what the dependencies are. Uh, good luck, because it means uh, actually running code and that's extremely unsafe and that's difficult anyway. So basically, you have to try one thing, try a second thing, try a third thing I haven't thought of. Uh, and you, you can do one, one step, two steps, three steps, and that's really complex, and you have to write unit tests, and you do not want to do this for uh, all those distributions out there. You'd much rather have one single tool that says, hey, yeah, I can get you metadata from PyPI, it does all the crazy work, and um, and then you can use it on Debian, you can use it on Fedora, or whatever you want. So, to sum up, what, what do we really want? Um, um, we want a unified CLI. You, you want a tool, you, you can say, I want to pack it, a package that's available on PyPI and the distribution I use is Debian, it's Fedora, it's OpenBSD. Um, we want a unified behavior, so we want to be able to know that what ha what's happening is going to happen the exact same way for all distributions. We want something that's modular, because we want a module that can read PyPI, we want another module that can read uh, RubyGems, another module that can read the Perl archive and, uh, and gather metadata. And then we want uh, a module that can write a Debian package, a module that can write a spec file, a module that can write a Mac file for OpenBSD. Uh, and we want something simple. So is there such a, such a tool? No. End of talk. Bye. Uh, so there wasn't. And I decided to write one. Because as a fine gentleman over there, I started by writing a tool in Geeks that was just mapping from one archive to one uh, distribution, uh, in this case Geeks. And I thought, yeah, that's basically nobody is going to reuse the work I've done on PyPy, and it was a huge pain in the... Well, so maybe I could share that work with some other people. And here, as we can see on slide 17, <coughs> um, <laughs> so the idea is just what I've explained. So you start with <coughs> modules that read metadata provided by your, uh, your public archive. This, these modules send all that data to the core of the, the tool I wrote. 
uh, which in turn sends it to a bunch of backends that create packages. So there's, uh, we have a few backends. So for instance, so my tool is called the Universal Packaging Tool because I have no ideas for naming stuff. Uh, in short, it's UPT. And I have a user <coughs> called UPT-PyPI, which passes PyPI. UPT-CPAN does the same for CPAN. And uh, then I have UPT-OpenBSD uh, that creates an OpenBSD make file, and, and so on and so on. Is that clear without the slides? Yeah. Uh, it's basically, you can think of it as a compiler. Uh, but in a compiler, the front ends are the languages, and the back ends are the, the hardware architectures. And here the front ends are the public package archives, and the, the back ends are your uh, distribution. Um, yeah, so I currently, so I wrote this as a proof of concept. I have three back ends for CPAN, PyPy, Ruby, uh, three, three front ends for CPAN, PyPy, and Ruby gems. And I have five back ends for Fedora, FreeBSD, Gix, Nix, and OpenBSD. So it, it works. You, you just have to use the UPT package uh, command. It's all in the slides that you will be reading uh, in the train or in the plane when you're bored to death and, and going home. Uh, you just give it a, a dash dash front end option that says, oh, I want to package something that's on PyPI. A dash dash back end option that says, oh, I want to package it for OpenBSD. And it will create all the files you need. Um, I'm really proud of this because it works. I was supposed to show you a make file for OpenBSD, and you're like, yeah, you see, it's, it's almost complete, and well, the, the packager can just review it and fix the very little things that could not be automated. But I won't be able to do it, and you have to believe me, the make file is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier this way. I'm, I'm going to use faulty HDMI cables in all my talks now. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, then I would show you that by replacing OpenBSD with Nix, you would generate uh, something that's, um, that, that would work in Nix. That, that was fantastic, but you won't get to see it. So about modularity, what's really interesting is that um, you, the, the modules are distributed in their own Git repositories. Why is it great? Uh, it means you do not have to ask upstream, that is me, to uh, include your work if you want to create a new language that has its own public archive, or if you're creating a new distro. You can just write your own stuff, use the technology you want, as long as it's Python, but you can use you can use the test runners you want, you can use the coding style you want, you, you can use type hints, you can use Python too if you're crazy. But you have a bit more freedom uh, with regards to technical choices, and you can run your own project. And the idea also is that if you're a Debian developer, you do not have to agree with Fedora developers on how to do things. And same if you if you run a PyPy or Ruby Gems or, or anything. So it means you can collaborate with other people without actually having to agree with them, which is probably great because humans are generally not good. I mean, <laughs> we've been waging wars for thousands of years for stupid reasons. I mean, I've, I've given up hopes. So it's easy for small projects. You can be independent. Um, who, who thought, wow, this guy, so you'll remember me because I'm the guy with no slides, but who thought, <laughs> hey, on top of having no slides, this guy made an excellent point, we should dish all the crazy tools we, we had and use his tool, who, who's like, yeah, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, can there be anyone thinking of it? There's a whole interest, do, do you know Cookie Cutter? It's, it's a tool that allows you to create skeletons for projects. So there's a cookie cutter available that allows you to create either a, a front end or a back end. So you just fill in a few, you, you have to answer a few questions and create all the code is ready to go. You just have to uh, fill in the parts that seem interesting. So you can do that. I would have talked to you about a different uh, tool that's called FPM, but you know, it's not so good. You can look it up. Uh, basically, it generates binary packages rather than source packages, so you can't uh, you can't use it to submit patches to your distributions, and that's why I don't really like it. Um, yeah, so future work, and then we'll have questions. Something that would really be great if it's people from PyPI and and Ruby Gems and CPAN, etc. I mean, they all provide the same thing. They provide a JSON file with the name of the package, the version, the name of the author, the kind of thing. But in you know, a different format every time, which means you have to pass, uh, you have to write a different JSON parser, basically. You know? well, not a full JSON parser, but a uh, metadata parser. 
it would be great if we could all agree on a single uh, format for metadata and have this shared amongst all uh, public archives. <laughs> Which means if you create a new language with a new archive, you just use the same format and you'd be compatible with um, uh, magic tools such as the one I've written. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen though. So if, if do we have any people who run like PI, CPAN or stuff in the room? Yeah, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> that would be great though. I mean, if you've got no questions, you can close your eyes and dream for a few minutes, but people have questions. <laughs> no. If um, additionally, all distros agree on the same packaging, you two text users. <laughs> so I have two users other than me. <laughs> you on your presentation. I think it's much better without the slides. I've seen yeah. some of the slides, you know, you explain it so well. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I have to repeat this for the... For the <laughs> 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 this guy said, could you please stay for another two hours? I would like to, I'd love to have lunch with you. Could you come back next year, be on the main track? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you wanted to ask a serious question, well, too late. Who's your target audience? Debian maintainers, Debian developers, Fedora, all, all the people who have to package stuff and who, I mean, let's be real, when you go to a web page and you manually copy-paste the version of the package, the name of the, the author, you're not playing with your kids, you're not playing the guitar, you're not doing anything interesting with your life. The interesting part of that packaging is the result and maybe doing some debugging at some point. And so the target audience is also people who use uh, the tools I would have shown you that already exist, because I've tried some of them, and I'm pretty sure they, they, some of them, they, none of them will give you all the info you need. The, the thing that's really important is that if someone sends me a patch for upt-pypi, so the, the tool that passes pypi, if the, the, the improvement will be available for all distributions. So that's a way of sharing uh, all this code. And currently, well, you, you'd have to update your own tool and Fedora developers would have to update their own. And even if you fix a bug in the generation of the Fedora package, uh, you'd have to, to put that change in many different tools. Here, by not duplicating code, we make sure that nobody loses too much time. Yep? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm maintaining a generator. And, uh, yeah, well, I do agree with you that it's a great thing for them to be able to share metadata and also the But for example, for NPM, I encountered some really weird issues like the circular dependencies. They don't translate well to what yeah, conventional package managers with distributions do. And, uh, and also, for example, how version ranges are resolved. Uh, that's also weird. Sometimes uh, in NPM, a version range can be solved to a existing version, but necessarily a latest version. Okay. I also thought about dealing with such corner cases. So the, the question is basically, uh, so someone is maintaining a similar tool and, and says, oh, I, I have issues with NPM because there are circular dependencies and, and weird stuff, basically. Uh, so the thing is, if it's hard, it's going to be hard for all the tools that have to deal with NPM. So the idea is that we do the hard stuff only once. Uh, I do not know exactly how it works in NPM because I didn't write an NPM backend. I'm allergic to JavaScript. There's a note from my doctor saying I'm not a a nerd conference when people like you yeah, just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the rage nowadays in, 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 in computer programming. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but I think if you if you took the time to figure out some of, of these uh, issues, it would be great to be able to share the code and make it available to other people. Because I think you do not hate anyone enough to wish for them to spend time solving the same issues as you on NPM. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's quite terrible. He has a few ideas of people he hates. Okay. You're in the back. Uh, I'm curious what needs to be done to add another a new backend. And the second question is, what would be the idea? Like, how would you imagine updating uh, stuff? Like, even if you do have a generic format, the distribution still wants to add the specific data. Like, who's maintaining that package or what specific dependency names that you cannot know in the generic format? Like our biggest problem is we have something like 1,200 word packages and then when somebody didn't maintain them for a while there are 200 that need updating and we would really like to, let's say, optimize that step. 
Well, what distribution are you talking about? Backwards. Okay. Um, yeah, so the question is, so there are multiple questions. First one is, how hard is it to add a, a module, basically? Uh, do, do, you have a, do you have a laptop and, and a couple hours? Because we can do that in the corridor if you want. Okay, but anyone who wants to have a hackathon with me and, and miss. Uh, so there's a particular project and there's, I think, good documentation. As I'm showing my cap to me, I think. Uh, <laughs> so there's a and you can, um, so you can create the skeleton for your project. And then, yeah, I, I kind of have to lie to you because the naming conventions for packages differ in, in distributions depending on whether you use a Python package or a Ruby package. So some of the info that's passed to the backends is, hey, this package comes from PyPI, and you have to do a little bit of glue to say, yeah, okay, the, the naming convention will be this. I cannot show you the code right now, but in OpenBSD, basically, I need a, a few classes, like I have a Python class, and it's just a few methods, and most of the work is done in a generic class. So I think we completely reduce code duplication, even though it's not magical. I think there's no time for any more questions, but uh, I'm, I'm available. If you do not want to see the next talk, if you, if that's not, what is it about? Is it really interesting? Wouldn't you want to have a next <laughs> I don't know. The next speaker hates me. <laughs>